So welcome back to the Free From Wall Street podcast. We got Paul Chella from the Key Arcs Group with us today. So we're still dealing with uh, COVID-19, quarantine, you know, 2020. And, you know, I appreciate you jumping on here, Paul. I know everybody has got a ton of information out there. I, I wanted to get you on here to create some value for our listeners. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, what your background is, and we'll dive in. Sure, Steve. Thanks for having me. Um, I am the managing principal of the Key Arts Group, and I've been in the financial world uh, for approaching 30 years. Can't believe I'm saying that now, but it's been 30 years. And uh, I started my uh, group, the Key Arts Group back in 2006, and our focus was uh, we were known as the cost reduction company. So uh, this this is really apropos the uh, the conversation, so I, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So this is kind of why I wanted to have you come in here, talk about you know different ways to start slashing some spending, where to find some money. Right now, solvency is key, right? So look, everybody's looking mm-hmm. for liquidity. You know, so I know that there's a bunch of programs out there. I know there's a lot of information and misinformation out there. So. Just wanted to talk about some of the tangible, actionable steps that business owners, entrepreneurs, and even even employees might be able to take right now to kind of insulate sure. themselves from utter destruction, right, over the next 90 days, and yep. just be able to buy some time for them and their families and give themselves a sense of peace while you're going through that. I think it's a big deal to know that you're going to come through it on the other side, and there's some, there's some actionable steps that we can take to really do that. So let's start there. I mean, what are you telling business owners right now as kind of like, first thing, pause and do this? Right. Okay. So let me, let me, let me take one step back, Steve. I, um, I think, you know, since this virus started, I can't stop thinking about the business owner, the small business owner and what we can do. So I put together a, a little bit of a, a think tank, attorneys, accountants, uh, consultants, and have come up with a, a number of ideas with the goal to save, find money or save money. And that's, you know, things, some things that I'll touch on in, in a moment. Um, and just, I want to rewind the tape a little bit. Um, it's funny, early in my career, I, you know, get, getting to this point, I, um, I met with a CEO of a large hospital and uh, I was well over my head. The, guy, the gentleman only agreed to see me because we had a common friend. Anyway, the moral of the story was the CEO said to me, hey, um, Paul, if you, can, if you can't mitigate my risk, increase my profits, or reduce my expenses, you're absolutely no good to me. So sure. that, really stuck, that really stuck with me. So I say that because here's the CEO of a 15,000-person hospital talking about number three and the top three, and it was you know, reduce expenses. So Right now, I'm, I'm not going to focus on mitigating risk or increasing your profits. I'm, I'm going to go to bottom line things and things that can, again, find money or save money. So the first thing, Steve, that I talk about is forbearance. And, and this is something I'm happy to provide uh, information to anyone who wants it, any of your listeners. But forbearance of lease, if any of the business owners you lease your building, um, what you can do is we've drafted a letter and uh, you would have to craft it to your personal situation, but we've drafted a letter that gives the landlord, if you're proactive with a landlord, uh, we have landlords that would rather get, you're going to be there and you're not just skipping town. So being proactive, meaning, hey, can you give me two free months rent now and I'll put it on the back end of the lease? Can you take a portion of my deposit up front and put that, use that today? So you're still paying the guy. Landlords, you've got to give them options. With um, with the SBA uh, loan, and I'll let me just jump in. Quick. Yeah, let me just jump in on this forbearance because we're having a lot of conversations with friends of ours, and even internally because we are landlords, right? We own buildings where people are paying mm-hmm. rent, and we want to help people get through this too. As land- landlords, it's a reverse domino, right? The renter doesn't pay the landlord. The landlord can't pay the mortgage. The mortgage can't pay the service there. Yep. And now we have this economic crisis. So what we're all trying to do is recognize that this is a blip in the radar. It's a shortened period of time. So when you go to your landlord, right, we're putting different 
ideas in place too. Like, well, what if we pay 50% of the rent? The other 50% is covered by a deposit, like you mentioned. What if we give you a free month to kind of catch up and then put it back, not free month, but put it to the back of your lease, right? There's or a, sprinkle it over the remaining payments, right? I do $50 right. a month for the next 12, whatever it is, right? But be proactive. And I've been talking about this since literally 60 days ago when we knew this was coming. Let's get in touch with the servicer. Let's get in touch with the bank. Because now I got to go yep. talk to the bank. And I'm saying, hey, what are you guys doing? Wells Fargo just came out. 90 days. No payments won't hit your credit score. This is for residential. But in the commercial space, I know that there's big servicers like Key Bank that are offering similar things. Like, hey, we're not going to hit your mm -hmm. credit. We're not going to put you into a true forbearance situation where it, you know, it eliminates your ability to go get another loan. But what you're talking about is a really important step to be able to effectively hit the pause button, not bleed out cash, but work with your mortgage company, work with your landlord, work with your lender. Your auto lease, your credit card. And, and Steve, what I was, I was going to come back to the forbearance because it's part of the SBA. Part of the SBA loan, all small business owners send in the application. It's two and a half times payroll. Uh, and, um, and you get 25% of your overhead expenses, including leases. So my point was, if you can get some of the SBA money, which is flowing, and let's say you had a $1,000 uh, rent due, what I would say is, hey, if, if you knew you got 25% from the SBA, you can kick in 25%, take 25% from the, from the deposit. You know, it gives you some, some, you're finding money and you're coming up with a solution. So to your point, Steve, it's all about working with that landlord. Everybody's got a common goal here uh, to, to get it done, and, and everybody wants to figure it out. I talked to a big landlord of mine who, who leases space to doctors, and doctors, believe it or not, it's a big part of my practice, are hurting right now. And this gentleman has over 100,000 square feet in various buildings that he leases to, to doctor practices. And he's saying, Paul, he, when I send the forbearance idea, he's – he took my idea and went to all his clients and said, hey, listen, I'll work with you now because everybody was running for the hills. And it, it, when you talk to that landlord and you work with them, people want it, people, you'll come up with a solution that works for everybody. So, yeah, just it's a thought. just, it's communication. Everybody understands yep. the situation we're in. Everybody's a little on edge about it. But if we're communicating with each other and we're figuring it out, I think people they want to pay their rent if they can. They want to pay their mortgage if they can. But if liquidity is flexibility right now. So if there's some ways to mm -hmm. work with some people to decrease your expenses, which is what kind of we're talking about here, then these are some great ideas to actually go out and implement that. So first thing is pick up the phone. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the work with the landlord on the lease, the, the credit card institution, auto, and your mortgage institution. Those are, those are you know, area, big power areas that you can work on now. Uh, we, we discussed the SBA. If you're a small business owner under 500 employees, apply. Just apply. It's, they're giving, right now they're, they're passing through 10,000, uh, pretty much whatever, you know, without any uh, headaches. And then after, after that, you know, they'll, they'll come back to you with some uh, questions and such. Um, the next one I wanted to touch on is finding money, Steve. And, and with the stimulus package, part of it was when you get into your IRA or your 401k or your profit sharing plan, and you tap into those items pre 59 and a half, there's a penalty, a 10% penalty, age 59 and a half. So what's happened with the stimulus on top package of the tax, is, right? Exactly. But hang on. So step one is waiving the 10% penalty. Now, you'd normally have to pay the tax the following year and take that as income, ordinary income. However, what they're doing is they're going to give you three years to pay that back if you want without, without getting that penalty. You know, without, so you're going to be able to put the money back in over so three no, years. So no 10% penalty and also no, it doesn't create a taxable event for you unless you don't pay it back in the next 36 months. Unless you don't pay it back. So the details on that, Steve, I know we're still, you know, what I would tell everybody, consult with your, your, your tax advisor, your accountant, your CPA. But that's, that's my understanding of the rule. And it's, it, it's, I'm, I'm pretty tight on that. So yeah. I just, I and, just, you know, five days ago when I applied for my SBA loan, it's different today. 
than when I was exactly. doing an application. It's a little bit like moving, like painting a moving car right now. So these things are, <laughs> you know, they're, it's, it's come out, but it's, you know, they're still moving around a bunch. So definitely, you know, get comfortable with your CPA, your attorney on some of these things. But I, I agree with you. For liquidity purposes, if I could take $100,000 out of my deferred comp plan and put it in the bank account just for a safety net, I know that that makes my family breathe easier at night. Well, here's one thing I would say as a small business owner for you, but also think about your employees. Your employees are nervous. So the typical small business owner, we, we have, you know, we have to pay the rent and the salaries and we have, you know, more responsibilities than the employee themselves. But the employee that's making 30 or 40,000 a year, they're, they're really uptight right now and they're nervous themselves. So for them to be able to tap into, you know, some monies for their 401k, Hey, uh, uh, you know, a guy or girl can come home to their spouse and say, honey, don't worry. We, we can pay the mortgage for the next two months. And, and I call that peace of mind. And I call that goodwill with the employer, tell your employees and you're looking out for them, which, which leads me into uh, the qualified area. Steve, um, on the qualified space, as an employer, uh, if you have a 401k, you typically, you know, there's a, there's a safe harbor match, a three or 4% match. I'm telling business owners, you can freeze that match. So that monthly match, most employers do it monthly, not at the end of the year. Most of the employers do it monthly. And depending upon how many employees you have, you know, you have 40, 50 employees, that can become a significant number of drains. So, you know, if you have a fixed 3% safe harbor, that's got to be paid regardless. So what I would suggest is contacting your TPA, your third-party administer, or if you use an actuary, contact them. There's some rules you need to give a notice to your employees that your third-party administer needs to prepare. And it's a simple thing to do, but you could freeze that, freeze that match and free up some capital for yourself. The bigger one or the bigger concern I have is for the small business owner with, you know, typically fewer than 10 employees that's very successful that has what's called the defined benefit plan. And those are where employers, you know, like, let's say, Steve, you and I are partners and we're, do, we're getting much bigger deductions. I call them jumbo deductions, deductions that are 150,000 and up. And if we had, let's say, 10 employees, including ourselves, we might be getting $150,000, $200,000 deduction, but, but to do that, we have to maybe give away eighty or $90,000 to the, to the rank and file. So if, once you get to 1,000 hours for the employees, that contribution cannot be frozen for the year. So it's a mandatory contribution. So what I'm, what I'm telling the small business owner is be aware it's something they're not thinking about, Steve. It's a huge liability. And with the market down and, and the assets are way down, there's all kinds of problems with defined benefit plans already. But now at the end of the year, you've just gotten by and now all of a sudden your actuary is telling you, oh, by the way, you got to put in another 90,000 for the employees because you right. didn't freeze it. Yeah, that'll hurt. So, right. So that will hurt big time. So um, for any of you that have a, a cash balance plan, there's forms of defined benefit plans, cash balance plan, 412B. Um, if you have one of those type of plans, you definitely, you need to act soon because that thousand hours is going to happen, uh, probably in about, um, you know, end of uh, May ish. So you got to jump on that and you need to make preparations for that one, uh, as soon as possible. So reach out um, to the third party administrator and talk to them about this and get, get that enacted. If it's a defined benefit plan, it's typically done through an actuary. Okay. If it's the 401k is typically done through the TPA, the third party administer. Noted. Cool, man. Um, then there's the, the one last area, the save area. And this is one thing that I, I say, you know, what, what can we do quickly? Uh, I, you know, I, I like to say I'll buy the next invoice. So any of the small businesses that have what I call ancillary benefits, those are the benefits outside of the health insurance. To change or modify or tweak your health insurance is a little bit clunky right now, Steve. It can be done. There's things that, that you can look at, level funding and some certain things on health. We could talk about that maybe at, a, at another segment. When I say clunky, it's not going to happen in 30 days. It's going to take a little bit more time. So that's something we can revisit. 
But the one that you can get on the next invoice, within the next invoice, is, is the ancillary benefits. That's the short-term, long-term disability, group life, group AD&D, accidental death and dismemberment, and dental vision. So with the first ones that I mentioned, the short-term, long-term, group life, and AD&D, we're securing 40 and 50% savings for groups right now and, and under 100 lives we can get results back in five to seven business days now why so, is that paul why are you seeing those types of reductions in in premium payments and things like that um well for, first i'm you know i'm a general agent for a number of large providers providers like lincoln and sun and hartford and unum principal standard just to name a few and they they are working with people right now and and right now we're We've set a goal. I'm getting this message out. My goal is to get our message out to 10,000 business owners within 10 days. And we've been out there to, we're already over a few thousand of getting the message out. Um, but to answer your question, why are the companies doing it? The insurance companies are, you know, everybody's coming to them with problems right now. And, oh, is this going to pay? Is that going to pay? And they're not flooding in with new business. So right now, I have, you know, I, I have uh, advisors that work with us, thousands of advisors around the country that are coming to us. So I'm, I'm a point of, of production for these companies. And I'm saying, listen, if you can help these small business owners with significant savings, don't come back to me with 2 or 3%. If you can come back and cut their bill almost in half, now we're talking. So I, I have carriers, seven carriers that – and, you know, if you don't like this one, I'll go to this carrier and pitting them against each other. I'm creating auctions for these. So we are, we are negotiating 40 to 50% savings right now, apples to apples coverage. It's, it's, it's the greatest time to do this for the business owner and, and slash it. Um, I'll insane. give you an example. Yeah, I have, um, I had a, uh, one group we just worked on was 48 employees of this consulting company. They're, Short-term, long-term in life was, a, was a, I'll just use round numbers, about 67500 um, We cut that down, and we saved them. Uh, we saved that group $28,000, uh, you know, $2,400 a month approximately, and we did that in five days. So, hey, listen, you're, you're working on the forbearance. You're working on this. You start looking at all these different areas, and it starts to add up. And sure. you can get a small business owner and find them four, five, six thousand dollars a month, hey, that becomes significant. On the dental plans for these small business owners, if you provide dental insurance to your employees, um, we're right now we're negotiating we're negotiating a 14 to 18 percent savings. So, you know, with with a simple census, Steve, which is name, date of birth, salary, occupation, and gender. Uh, with a current summary plan, I have 60% to 10,000 to age 65 on long term. Short term is 60% begins after eight days and lasts for you know uh, uh, six months or three months. Life insurance, we give away 100,000 and we let them buy up to X, Y, Z. If we get the summary plan descriptions and a most current invoice, and you're under 100, five to seven business days, we could turn those around. Wow. So this, I mean, this is a big deal right now because we're talking about everything, subscriptions that we have within the business, you know, what, what bills are due and anywhere we can hit the pause button or slash prices. Um, those expenses, they, they add up, right? And we're all trying to live for the next 90 to 120 days so that we are solvent. And when the world turns back on, we can all hit the ground running and, and go back to work. I think people that absolutely. I think the people that are not doing this right now are going to find themselves in very difficult positions um, a couple months out. So, you know, I appreciate you talking to all these business owners and I mean, just providing a bunch of value and information, right? I mean, and if you can save some money for them, fantastic. If, uh, if they're just looking to get some paperwork for you or some, some information on some of this stuff, it's, it's easy to find, but you have to be proactive. There's professionals out there that are all working with business owners that are trying to help them out. You, uh, you kind of lead the charge here. So it's, it's all good stuff. Um, you know, I, I almost hate to say what else, but I know you got more. So what else? Are we doing? <laughs> well, one, um, I'll just touch on this, Steve, because it's, 
you know, people are, people are nervous right now. Obviously everybody's scared with this and, you know, we're going to get through it. We all know we're going to get through it. I think, you know, as a nation, we're doing a great thing and we're we, you know, this is going to, we'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. But right now, uh, one of the things that I have a lot of business owners and people are nervous with, Hey, do I have enough life insurance and could I get more? And should I, could, could I get a little bit more during these times? So there are carriers out there, big, the big companies the you know, the triple a, uh, a plus rated, um, that are, you're, we're able to secure 500,000 up to 5 million through multiple carriers without having an examiner come to your home, getting a needle, you know, blood, blood specimen or, and a urine specimen done. So the fear is I'm not letting anybody in my house right now. Yeah, that's but, interesting because hey, I, I, I was wondering about this because if somebody wanted to go through the process that I went through to get my life insurance policies, right, there's, there's a little bit of an exam. They come to your house and make it easy. But, yeah, right now people kind of want to keep people out of their house. So, so that's interesting. So what are, are they waiving that and coming back to at, a, at another time? or? No, it, it's great. But, Steve, think about it. Let, let, me, let me take it one step further. Who's going to have a nurse that's in a hospital – in the red zone right now, come to your house. Yeah, and we're in New Jersey, right? So we're a hot spot. <laughs> right, with your kids and stuff like that. So that's not going to happen. So what they're doing is if uh, you have you fill out a form and it talks about all your medic, you know, you, your, what you take, your medications. They, they look up your medications, which is a, a system that they can look up what you've taken. If you take blood pressure med medication or whatever. So they'll look up the RXs that you're taking through the, the uh, public system. And, um, and they'll take the questions that you answered. They'll get the medical records from your current doctors and they'll take that information and they'll do the underwriting less the blood and urine. So they'll take, they're, get, they're gathering all the information. Now the, the great part is, is that you can, it, with an application, you could secure that with a credit card or, a, uh, or you know, the routing number on your check and you can actually bind the coverage. So if you wanted to get another 500,000 or a million or a million and a half, you could secure that coverage. Now, they may come back, we applied for a 20 year term that was, you know, for a million was $1,000. And the underwriter said, well, you're not in that risk class, you're one down, maybe it's $1,400, but you've at least found the coverage and, and then you would pay the 1400 going forward. Well, what but, happens, I mean, what happens, they don't have any clauses in here for COVID-19. I mean, what happens if you bind a coverage so that if you die of this virus, I mean, what are they doing with that? Do they have force majeure, you know, or act of God type exclusions in these policies? No, if I contacted it, it, mine and they said, no, you're covered if something were to happen to me because I was in force. Are they going to, are they going to validate that or are they going to exclude that from a current coverage? The only, the only way that it will be excluded is if you have the virus and you've been tested positive for it. Okay. So, so right now the company, so there's, you know, that, that if you get accepted and you, you're not positive for it, then if you get it, God forbid, and pass from it, they will pay that claim. But okay. you, to have it already is a pre-existing condition. So they're not going to write that. No, of course. But that I think is phenomenal too in the middle of a pandemic that's killing people for them to say, yeah, we're going to cover that. And I mean, that's a big deal for people that might not have coverage right now that might be, you know, in, um, in some concern, New York, New Jersey. I mean, look at where we're at, right. Things are not, you know, hopefully they'll be turning around here soon, but so that's really interesting. And, and you do policies. We've talked about this a bunch between you and I uh, off the air is you do the type of policies where you can do some paid up additions, you can create some uh, cash balances in these whole life policies kind of immediately and then even take them out 30 days later as kind of a cushion or kind of a investment expense. And we've been doing this to flip and fund um, multifamily housing and things like that for years. But it's just another way, right? If you have liquid cash right now, you could put it into a policy, leverage against it, and still have access to those funds while still binding a, a policy for yourself. Absolutely. So, Steve, we have a lot of clients that have the investment grade policies that you're speaking of. And actually, in this market, there's not been any losses in those policies. So, you know, I, I personally do it, and I know you do it. Um, but the, the clients that we have, 
it's 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 an allocation just like they have a you know a 401k or a bank account for right. emergency funds just like they have the 529s for the kids or a mutual fund uh, or a stock portfolio um, we we typically have 20 25 percent of our clients allocation in that asset and the neat part is for our clients that have that asset that's another source of money that they could tap into 100 cents on the dollars even in this marketplace so you, so there's been no downturn on that piece so yeah. i tell my clients let's tap into those dollars rather than get the dollars that are down 40 or 50 or 60 percent right because when that bounces back you don't want to have it sitting in your bank account so that's what i did you know my wife during all of this she's very pragmatic and she just she knows that liquidity is flexibility in this market and she said well What's our what's our liquidity position right now? Because she knows that we're buying a lot of apartment complexes. We have some hard deposits out. You know, we, we're all over the place. It's a cash flow business. Um, and that was one of the things that creates a lot of comfort for us is that, yeah, I have a couple hundred thousand dollars that if I need it, they'll wire it to me today or tomorrow if I need to tap mm -hmm. into it. And I could keep it in a bank account. I could pay my bills. I can get through these times, which – if you're not in this position today, I think it's a big, um, it should be at least an aha moment for people that planning for the worst in the middle of the worst is not a great time to do it. The best time to start was yesterday. The next best time is today. So the fact that we have some of these things set up where we were able to put some cash in some of these accounts where we would be able to pull them to, to get through a time like this. And I didn't see this coming. Nobody did, but to be set up with these different things that will insulate you through a time like this, man, it creates a lot of peace of mind. Yeah. And, and Steve, you know what, for a future talk um, back to my think tank, we're putting together, we're assembling some things that once we're out of the woods here, uh, assets that you should have in your portfolio that can't go down that don't go down in these times and and you know when when everything's rolling and there's no problems you know people talk about expenses or they focus on stuff you know and we have assets that you know we have a, a investment managers who go to cash in 2003 2008 they were 100 percent in cash in this market about uh february 15th they started going to cash so, yeah, I think, you know, I think the statistic was $10 trillion left the markets, right? Yeah, they they it, cashed out and somewhere. Right. And I, I know a lot of investment people who, you know, they, they're saying, hey, at what point can, can you, you just say no mops and you want out? And, you know, so having a mechanism in place that automatically goes to cash when, you know, through an algorithm, through something that's happening in the market and it's an automatic. The cash value port, you know, the the investment grade insurance that we mentioned, you can't lose in that. It can't go down. Um, there are, you know, there are annuities, and you know, there are annuities that even in this market, they had a value that was increasing and will be guaranteed to increase by a five or six percent increase and have a guaranteed payout. So there's some strategies. It's not this is right, that's wrong. It's that, you know, if you want, we're we could talk about it on a future segment on things that protect you no matter what happens and having I mean, assets that if something happens, these are the assets you're going to tap into if we have a situation like this. Yeah. And I say this a lot on our show because I know people think that because we're named free from wall street, that we bash wall street all the time. That's not the case. You know, I, I think that multifamily self storage insurance, I think all of those things need to be a piece of your portfolio to hedge your downside risk from the volatility of the market. Nobody's saying that the market isn't good. Nobody's saying that it's bad, but it is volatile. So if you have some downside protection, especially as you get later on in life and closer to retirement, you have to look at these things as hedging some of your downside risk, right? And that's exactly what you're talking about by saying, you know, algorithmically it's going to move you into a cash position or into an annuitized position or into a bond or something like that. Like, and, and there's a lot of strategies out there. So if, if people aren't working with advisors that can be honest, I think about the holistic approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of the issue that I have with wall street is that you're getting advice from a sales guy, right? Meaning, they only sell one thing. 
right? I want to talk to other investors, guys like you that are in the business that are also invested in markets and also invested in real estate and also invested over here. I want to learn from investors. I want to learn from salespeople because everybody has the agenda, right? Now we know that just by virtue of talking to you, you sell a couple of items, but all of those things came into what you can sell to create a more holistic portfolio for your clientele, which is those are the people I want to talk to. I want to talk to everybody about what piece of my portfolio can get me free from wall street, meaning the freedom of the volatility of the market, meaning I'm not hoping as a strategy for my retirement because even in times like this, I would, I would argue, especially in times like this is when you have to make sure that you, all of your eggs were in a basket that you can still bank on in 10 or 15 years when you're going to go to retire. Right, right now, yeah, we're moving some things to cash, but we, we own assets that are still cash flowing. We have insurance policies that give me cash and God forbid something were to happen to us, pay off you know, all, all of our debts and set my family up. So a lot of really good things out there, but make sure you're talking to the right people about this. Thing, mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, well, I mean, Paul, I really appreciate you coming on here. We covered a ton People are going to have questions. They're going to want to reach out to you over the next couple of weeks. Where can they find you? How do they get in touch? Well, first is the website is keyarx, K-E-Y-A-R-X.com. Um, um, for your listeners, I'll give you my email. And if anybody has any questions, just type out what your thoughts are, what you're thinking about, when is a good time to talk, and a number. And I'll contact your, your, uh, your base. Uh, 973-768-0356 is my cell. And um, my email is paul at K-E-Y-A-R-X.com. So Paul's going to be out speaking and he's talking to a lot of international groups right now. So reach out, leave him a message, give him an email, give him a minute to get back to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, really good stuff, Paul. We're going to continue talking as these things continue to develop. Maybe we'll have you on in another week or two to just kind of recap what's going on. Things are probably going to change once again. It's important to stay on top of these things. Like I said before, like painting a moving car. We just got to keep on top of it. Um, but yeah, man, thank you so much for taking the time and talking to us and excited for everything that you're doing. Anything that we can do from the Free From Wall Street group or the Integrity Group side, you know, definitely reach out to us and uh, – We'll be in touch. And once this is all over, we will not socially distance together again. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to having a beer in a bar. Yes. You know, so. <laughs> anyway, Steve, I appreciate you. You're doing great, great work. And um, I'm here for you. If you need me, we'll, we'll chat again. Okay. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate you, man. We'll talk soon. Take care.